The Power Query Advanced Editor lets you see the code that Power Query is creating behind the scenes. The Advanced Editor uses Power Query Formula Language, also called Power Query M Language, or simply M. Let's see how this works. I have this inventory data here. Let's send this to Power Query. Here in the Power Query Editor, in the Applied Steps, Power Query brought in our source data and applied the automatic change type step. Let's perform one more step. Right click on the products column, go down to transform and click on capitalize each word. And each word is capitalized in this column. Let's click on the source step here in applied steps and click on our formula bar. And we can see the formula for bringing in the source data which is excel.currentworkbook. If you would like to learn more on this function, please check out this video here. Use Power Query to combine multiple sheets into one. The link is in the description also. Clicking on the change type step shows us the formula Power Query used to perform the step and the same for capitalized each word. To understand the basics of M code, let's access the advanced editor here in the home tab you can also access it here in the View tab. And here is where we can see the behind the scenes code that Power Query is creating with each step. There are only two sections in the code, the let expression and the in expression. Let defines our variables and in is the output generated from our query. Every variable forms a step. That's because Power Query is a step-by-step -step transformation. So every transformation happens in a step. If you look on the right here at our applied steps, you will see that our source, change type, and capitalized each word variables all form part of our transformation steps. The steps are evaluated in a sequential order from top to bottom, and variables can refer to other variables. Our capitalized each word variable refers to our change type variable, and change type refers to our source variable. Variables can be one word, like source, or variables can have spaces in them. Where there are spaces, then you need to put the variable name inside double quotes and put a hash sign at the beginning. Let's remove the hash and inverted commas and the space for the change type step and make the changes to the other areas that change type is referenced in and hit done. And here in applied steps, our change type step has also updated to not have a space. Each of these lines of code in the let section ends with a comma to show the end of a line of code, except for the last line before the in statement to show that this is the last step in the evaluation and to expect an output next. There is also no comma in the in statement as this is where our output is generated. It's important to note that the user interface will always generate code where each variable or step builds on the value returned by the previous variable or step. So the steps in Power Query are sequential. But when you're writing your own code, the variables can be in the order that suits you. So if we moved capitalized each word before change type, remember to insert the comma at the end here, and delete the comma for the change type step, as this is the last step before in, and hit done, we will still get the same value which is our transformed table. However, it does mean that the applied steps no longer display each step. Let's delete capitalized each word in the in section and type in the double quotes, I love Power Query. Notice the text changes to red, as this shows this is a text value that's hard-coded and it's not a variable, and hit done. The value I love Power Query is returned, so the query didn't need to evaluate the previous steps to do this. So while the variable list might look like procedural code, it isn't. It's just a list of variables that can be in any order. Variables can be used to store values of any type such as numbers, text, dates, or even more complex types like tables, lists, 
or records. Here in our table 1 query, all three variables return a table. The values in red are seen as text. Blue is for keywords that are known by Power Query, like type, each, if, then, else, true, false, as. Green values are for null, as well as data types, like date, time, text, and so forth. And also for numbers that we input into our query. But if you add quotation marks to your number, the number color is no longer green, but it changes to red, as it is seen as text. So if you send that number back to Excel, Excel will read it as text, and you won't be able to perform any calculations on that number. I've added the sales data query to our query editor, showing the month, sales rep's name, and the amount of sales they made for that month. We're going to use this data to understand the different types of brackets used in Power Query. Functions use brackets. So here in the change type step, our formula table.transform column types uses the open and closed brackets or parentheses. This is the same as in Excel when using formulas. Square brackets are used when you're referencing a column. Let's create a blank query here, right click, new query, other sources, and click on blank query. Type an equal sign and start typing the name of the query. So that's sales data and the IntelliSense brings up our query. Click on that and press enter and we get back the sales data table. Now, if we want to get back a specific column, type the open brackets and the closed one is automatically added. Let's type in sales rep and press enter and we get back a list. Just to note that if your column name has a space but it's referenced inside a square bracket, you don't need to add quotation marks. Now, if we want to create a new list, this is where you would use the curly brackets. So if we type equals and the open curly brackets, the closing curly brackets is automatic. And when we press enter, we get an empty list. Let's type some text. So January, just to note that text in curly brackets have to be in quotation marks. Whereas numbers are not. Then insert a comma and type February. Insert a comma, then type 1, comma 2. So our list can be of different types. Here it's text and numbers, and press enter. And we get these values in the same list. You can also create a from and a to list. So for example, if you wanted A to J, then type A in quotation marks and type dot dot and type J also in quotation marks and we have our from A to J list. We could also add a comma and type 1 to 10 and we get all these values in the same list. Now if we wanted to return a record, a record is in square brackets. So if we just type equals and type a square bracket and press enter, we get an empty record. Let's create this record. Think of the input in your record as the column names. So month is the column name. Notice month is not in quotation marks as it's in the square brackets. Type equals January, which is in quotation marks as this is text inside the column month and press enter, and we have our first record. Let's add to the record, insert a comma, type sales rep, and equals Thomas in quotation marks, insert a comma, amount equals 2000. Notice the number 2000 is not in quotation marks, 
as it's not text, and press enter. And we have our record returned. Now let's create a table. To create a table, type hash table and insert open parentheses. This function requires a list for the column headers and a list of lists for the content. So our first list is our column headers. So that would be month and sales rep, both in quotation marks as we're using the curly brackets. Then insert a comma and insert two open parentheses as we need a list of lists for the content of our column headers. And type January in quotation marks, insert a comma and type Thomas also in quotation marks and press enter. And we have a table with two columns and one row. If we want to add another row, insert a comma with an open parenthesis and type the next row of data that you require. And we now have two rows. Now, if you wanted to see the full list of Power Query functions, let's create a blank query. In the formula bar, type equals and hash shared in lowercase and press enter and a list of all the Power Query functions are returned. I'd suggest you turn this into a table by clicking on this icon so we can filter on text that contains the word table. Remember Power Query is case sensitive and click on OK and we have all the table functions. I will be releasing a video on how to create a custom function using the advanced editor, how to invoke the custom function and understand why it's better to use custom functions instead of just creating a query. I will add it here as soon as it's released. Please also hit the notification bell so that you know as soon as that video is up. In the meanwhile, please check out this Power Query error handling video which shows you what causes the column of the table wasn't found errors and download did not complete errors and how to fix them. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.